Have I ever noticed how conservatives and liberals can't seem to communicate with each other when it comes to the economy or anything? If only there was someone who was insightful, funny, and had his own web show that could explain both sides to us. Year. The one time that Americans switch the channel from our usual entertainment affair and see what our politicians are saying. You are a, a war bag barbler now! I'll use small words that you'll be sure to understand, you warthog faced buffoon. You clinking, clanking, clattering collection of collisionous junk! Sure, I switched the channel. Hey gang, Normal Guy here again for Normal Guy vs. The World. You miss me? Doing something a little different today. Instead of going into the realm of pop culture, we're going into the realm of politics. Which, you know, since this is a fit web show about stuff I'm interested in, and I'm interested in politics, there you go. You sure about this? Yeah, it's gonna be fun. With all the name calling that goes on back and forth between conservative, liberal pundits and politicians. You people are so petty and tiny. It's easy to miss that both sides really are you know, selling two different things, two different visions for what America should be. So my crack team of producers and I have broken down each side's vision for the country so that you can decide which one you want to buy come November. I don't care how he voted Shakespeare insult cup. I don't tolerate bad language in my studio. Apologize to Treebeard. Issue number one in politics is almost always the economy. I mean, as long as you're getting your three squares a day, you can let a lot slide. In America, our economy is based on the free market or capitalist system, which means that you can trade with each other as you please, and the agreements you make with each other are enforced by law, so you can't break your word. The basic liberal democrat position is that the average person can't make it in this system without some government help. Therefore, the problems start when government is not involved enough in the U.S. economy. The big guys take advantage of the little guys, the rich get rich and the poor get poorer, People make bad financial decisions, and then the economy collapses, and, you know, chaos reigns. Therefore, the solution is to have the government more involved in the economy, having more rules and regulations on the financial sector, businesses, banks, and taking money from people they judge can afford it with taxes, and then giving it to people they think need it. To back up this claim, they point to history. The recent financial crisis. Bush deregulated the banks, and we had the recession. They also point to the success Bill Clinton had when he had the higher tax rate than we have now, and the 1960s, which had some of our greatest prosperity with an even higher tax rate. The success FDR had with government programs in the Great Depression, and the necessity of breaking up the monopolies around the beginning of the 20th century. Sounds exhausting. The conservative Republican position is that the average person can make it in our system as long as they're not interfered with. Therefore, the problems start when there's too much government involvement in people's lives. When there are too many rules and regulations, it's harder for up-and-coming entrepreneurs and businessmen to have a successful business. When the government takes from successful people and gives to other people they think need it more, it punishes success and makes other people dependent on the government giving them stuff. Therefore, the solution is more free. 
in the free market. Less rules and regulations. Lower taxes for everybody and fewer government programs. Believing that with more money in their pockets, churches and people will fill the void with charities and people will be incentivized to rise out of poverty. And to back these positions up, the conservatives turn to the recent financial crisis. What? Where the government promised the banks as long as they started giving homes to people who couldn't afford them. They would make up the difference if they lost money on it. And then the government didn't. And we had the recession. They also turned to all the times where lowering taxes helped the economy and how the rise of poverty has coincided with when Johnson expanded the welfare state during the Great Society and how Im the improvements to that and the lessening of poverty came about when Bill Clinton and the Republicans reformed the welfare system. I understand. So, have I oversimplified this? Yes. I've got a 15 minute limit on my YouTube account. And of course, there are an unlimited number of counterpoints to all of these arguments and positions. The point is, you do your own research and then decide which of these visions for the country seems to best reflect your values and reflect reality as you've experienced it. I'm okay with that. If you think that this video has been helpful, share it with your friends and type a comment. Let me know what you thought of this. Now we can get back to watching the real important shows. You will never, ever, ever have a career in singing. I don't believe you. I'm telling you. I don't believe you. I'm telling you.